the mum joined the Ramblers Club, where she met my father, Fritz, who was a very bright, penniless German refugee. In those days, she said, he was irresponsible, charming, and fun, and neither had any desire to conform to social norms. Both sides of the family were horrified when they decided to get married, and on their honeymoon, they climbed the Matterhorn. <laughs> in 1948, my parents came to Canada, just for a couple of years. Mom had discovered that her chemistry degree wasn't much use once the war was over, and she didn't want to return to those narrow confines of her Welsh upbringing. She thought Canada sounded more exciting, at least judging from drawings that she'd seen of teepees and Hiawatha and Grey Owl. <laughs> She said, my father asked whether the housing they would be provided with at UBC would be a nice little teepees. Dad landed a job at UBC's physics department, and my mother did some first year teaching in chemistry and physics, I think. And uh, they started having children. They never planned on having four of them. In the late 50s, after my parents went The Curve of Time, I don't know how many of you know that book, about a family that spends a lot of time exploring the BC coast by boat. They bought a hulk of a boat themselves and fixed it up, a 29-foot wooden inboard called Lilibet. We kids had bunks in the forecastle while Kevin, who was still a baby, slept in a cupboard with a sliding door so he wouldn't fall out. <laughs> we took friends out for day trips, and the Kendalls shared that boat for a time. We explored the coast as far north as Bella Coola. Mom loved the boat. She called it a big adventure, but it was also somewhat humiliating, <coughs> as my father liked to keep to his schedules and was impatient with bad weather. And one time off Campbell River, my mother threatened to jump overboard and swim to shore if we didn't turn back. We had to sell a little bit to buy our first house. So there she was, raising four children, a frustrated housewife who really wanted to go back and get training for a job, increasingly unhappy with her marriage, often sick with the stress-related stomach ailments that plagued her from that time on. I don't know that she was happy, but there were long road trips and camping trips. My mother had a, a system of putting the diaper pail with soap and water on top of the car so the diapers would be washed by the time we got to our destination. <laughs> We spent summers in the Okanagan, where we got to lay on the beach and work on our suntans while my father worked at the radio observatory nearby. Mom supervised our music lessons, taught us to sew, took my preschool-aged brother on long walks while we were in school, and she was a good mother. She didn't interfere much, she didn't nag or lecture, but we always felt that she was there for us, well, usually. I remember she'd often have her nose in a book, and we'd say, Mom, Mom, Mom! <laughs> she was a chain smoker back then, and all the neighborhood kids would gather around to watch her use her very cool cigarette-making machine. My parents separated in 1968, and Mom married David and moved into a house on 14th Avenue in Vancouver. She was very sick for a while, and then she went back to UBC and got a sociology degree. One thing we all remember was the Sunday dinners at that house, when assorted Bowers and Kendalls would show up for David's Sunday roast dinner with all the trimmings and often followed by parlor games. <laughs> Come on in and welcome. In the mid-70s, Mom and David moved out to a holly farm in Alder Grove. Sorry, a hobby farm, no. <laughs> <laughs> a holly farm. Oh, <laughs> it was Old McDonald's Farm reincarnated with a milk cow called Susie, cattle that all had names, goats, chickens, pigs, and various cats and dogs, including an emotionally disturbed beetle. <laughs> My mother made the soap. It was hardly a model farm. Uh, makeshift fences were always falling down. And one time I com commented on a handy fabric cover that Mum had put on the base of the gearship knob in the rusty, rusty Datsun pickup. And Mum said, oh, that's a goat's other bag. <laughs> but it was a great place to visit. 
They were convinced that come the collapse of the world, all mums and native children would retreat back to the farm to live. And uh, she was almost disappointed when that never happened. <laughs> but we did all spend time out there, and some of us learned to milk a cow. During those years, she got a childcare job working with troubled youth. That was something she was far better suited for. She was very comfortable with the idea that people had problems in their lives. She was always the parent to whom we could go if we were in a mess. She almost expected life to be catastrophic. We sometimes joked that her two favorite verbs were surviving and coping, as in, well, I hope you survive, or how are you coping? One of Mom's favorite places was the cabin, a plywood hovel clinging to a chunk of cliff beside the ocean on the Sunshine Coast. She and David bought it in 1969. There was no water, no power, and no road access initially. When we went to the cabin, we pitched tents on a few patches of level ground, and we'd build trails and stairs, structures and decks, trying to make this chunk of cliff livable. It was heaven on earth in good weather, with sunsets to die for. And when it rained, it was all wet salals, slugs, and mosquitoes. I think we all have grand memories of very grubby weeks spent at the cabin. I go up by myself sometimes, and Jackie and Arnie spent as much time as they could up there before they bought their place on Galliano. They constructed a funky driftwood shelter that has served as our open-air kitchen ever since. Many of Mum's grandchildren have memories of hanging out with their cousins there, poking about the tide pools, climbing trees, or playing charades in the evening. It was a really important place to Mum, as a family gathering spot, but also as a place where people could play at building things. In her last years, it was kind of heartbreaking how she kept trying to get us to take her there, refusing to accept that she could no longer handle the two ferry trip or negotiate the steep, rough terrain. But it's where she wants her ashes spread. Mum and David moved to Vancouver Island in 2001 to that lovely, but chosen the Holly Farm. Her last years were difficult, dealing with David's decline, followed by her own increasing confusion, as well as the ongoing difficulties with Crohn's disease. But she got huge satisfaction from her hiking group, her skiing getaways with Lorna and Hilda, her weaving group, the people she'd known a long time and with whom she felt comfortable. Though never the warm or effusive type, she nevertheless cared and worried about the state of her children and grandchildren, and the Kendalls were included in that, especially Sarah. She continued to knit, even as the knitting became erratic. Here's an example of that over there. <laughs> she was gutsy, independent, opinionated, capable. She loved gardening. She railed against social injustices. She liked it when her kids sang together rather than engaging in noisy political arguments. And there was never an emotionally disturbed or idiosyncratic dog or cat that she didn't love. 